Super Mario 64 is one of my favorite games of all time, and it was the first game I ever played that had these free roam, open sandbox levels with various things to do in them. It introduced me to a whole new type of gameplay, and up until that point, the only thing I ever knew was get to the end of the stage. And despite how old it is, I think after all these years, the game and its stages still stack up. But why do I love these stages? Is it the objectives? The atmosphere? And while I'm at it, what then makes me dislike a stage? I had an itch to play through this game again, and I've been doing these best and worst videos lately, so it seemed appropriate to do some kind of video on it. So I thought compiling my favorite and least favorite stages would be a pretty good topic to talk about. So I'ma do that. Here's my personal list of best and worst Mario 64 stages. Let's -a go! All right. We're gonna need a way to separate stages into categories, so I decided to go with the most logical way, which is how the game itself splits them up. So first, we'll pick out the best and worst of the main floor stages, then move on to the stages located in the basement, then the second floor, then the third floor. Now, I was gonna throw the Bowser stages into the mix at first, but it was proving too difficult as I think all three are mostly equal in quality, but for the sake of stating it in the video, I guess I'd say that Bowser in the Sky is my favorite, and Bowser in the Fire Sea is my least favorite. Both good, though. The first stage on this list is one of my all-time favorite 3D Mario stages, and the fact that it was recreated as a stage in Mario Galaxy 2 just further proves that this is an all-around, well-designed and memorable stage. It's one of the more condensed stages with a lot to do in a pretty small area. To be honest, I don't even spend time in most of it because I've always seemed to get the stars in this one by unconventional means. To be fair, I do this in the rest of the game too, but this stage can just be cracked wide open once you're confident enough. It's the first stage that, in my opinion, has a really good flow to it that really aids in optimizing a route to complete it. Don't get me wrong, bob -omb Battlefield is great and all, but I really think Womp's Fortress is a better example of a playground, even despite its comparatively smaller size. The star missions are mostly all super fun and quick to accomplish, and you even get to blast your goddamn face into a wall to make it explode. Now, the boss fight star and the star that follows it are both very similar. Climb to the top of the stage, only at the end of one is a boss fight, and the other is a platforming challenge. Normally, I'd say this would feel pretty repetitive, but again, because of the stage's smaller size and speed in which it can be completed makes it seem pretty inoffensive. It's a pretty fast-paced level and grants a constant sense of reward in a short period of time for players who've mastered it. Also, plus 10 points for the boss womp going uh -oh. Also, honorable mention goes to Cool Cool Mountain for baby penguins. Okay, so I hate this slow, barren wasteland-ass stage so much that during this playthrough, I only gathered like four stars and then got right out of there. And even then, that was more time spent in this level than I'd have liked. First off, the first star is so difficult to to get when you don't know what you're doing because honestly I've been playing this game for over 20 years and I still don't know exactly how to get it it requires you to go inside the sunken ship and solve a puzzle, but there's a giant eel blocking the entrance to the ship. You have to lead him out, and I swear every single time I do this, I just kind of swim in his face a bunch of times until I eventually swim away and then come back. I get that you're supposed to swim in his face and then lure him out away from the ship, and at this point I can just use Google, but as a kid, this frustrated the shit out of me because I was given pretty much no direction. The stage itself is barely a stage, and more so just a giant pit of water with not much to do besides drowning. To death. I know a lot of people dislike Dire Dire Docks, the game's other water level, but in my opinion, this one is just so much worse. In fact, the only star I semi-enjoy getting is this one where you hop into the cannon and just shoot yourself to it, and that's over in about three seconds. Which is funny, considering how slow the rest of the stage is. I didn't love water stages in 2D Mario, but at least in those games, you move a little faster and there's a physics factor with momentum to consider while traversing them. This is just a slog. Lethal Lava Land is probably, like, my favorite stage in the game. Like Womp's Fortress, it's small and condensed, quick to explore and complete, only this time has another separate area to explore for two of its stars. As soon as you enter the level, pretty much the whole thing is laid out for you and you can just go crazy and do whatever you want in whatever order you want. Not to mention, this stage has the most quick and straightforward red coin mission in the game and it's the only one I don't feel is a chore to complete. Now, the stage's main enemy isn't so much the enemies themselves, but the lava that coats a good percentage of the stage. Now, you can see this as a threat or you can use it to your advantage. If you're confident and willing to put a little health on the line by melting your butt cheek shut with Molten Rock, it's pretty easy to skirt around the many platforming challenges and just quickly get to whatever area in the stage you want. Not to mention, later on you get a rideable Koopa shell that cracks the whole stage wide open, as well as collect like a billion one-ups scattered around the stage that are otherwise much less accessible. Inside the volcano is pretty fun too, despite the one star that requires you to wait on this moving platform to access, but honestly that one is like the only drawback to this stage for me. Never understood challenges in a platforming game that requires 
require nothing of the player apart from just waiting. This is a super solid, straightforward stage, and I was able to fully complete it in about 10 minutes, and I'd definitely take a short, quick, and fun stage over a boring one with cryptic objectives that takes 20 years. And speaking of, I can't stand Hazy Maze Cave. I will say that with the exception of Jolly Roger Bay, even the stages in this game that I think are the worst are still pretty okay, so I can't say I despise this one, but it's definitely a low point in the game. Quite a few of the stars are pretty cryptic and don't do much to convey what the objective actually is. This level does have one cool thing in it though, which is the metal cap switch area. It's like a little mini entrance inside the level that looks like the entrance to Hazy Maze Cave itself, but I can't really give the stage itself credit since it's technically a totally different area. Speaking of the metal cap, you're supposed to unlock it so you can press this underwater switch to get this star, but I've always just kind of done this instead. Unlike the last stage, this one is home to one of the most annoying and dragged out red coin missions in the game, where you have to direct this platform that hovers above the ground to collect the red coins. It's not all that difficult, but it's just slow and boring. Also, despite playing this game as many times as I have, I still can't seem to remember exactly how to navigate this poison maze thing that I guess the level is named after. I can't say this level is an abomination, but it's just dreary and dark and much slower paced. It's puzzling to navigate and definitely one of the few levels where I ugh upon needing to play it. I will give this level one extra credit point for Dory, though. So when choosing between which of the two snow levels was going to make it onto this list, I had to go with Snowman's Land. I don't think Cool Cool Mountain is a bad stage, but there's so much less to do comparatively. First off, when I was a kid, I always thought it was cool that this stage had a little boss fight against a winter version of the bullies from Lethal Lava Land, and also this one star inside an ice block that is one of my favorite stars in the game. It's super simple and easy to get, but there's just something really satisfying about getting those hidden in plain sight stars, like the Chain Chomp one right in the beginning of bob -omb Battlefield. So quick story though about a little trauma I have from this stage. The whole stage is built around a centerpiece, which is common for 3D platformers, and in this it happens to be a giant snowman that blows Mario away if you get caught in the wind gusts coming from his mouth. Normally, what you're supposed to do is slowly move back and forth using this penguin who won't just walk in a straight fucking line as a barrier to avoid the wind, and it leads to a star atop his head. Now if you mess up and get caught in the wind, he launches Mario away and you land all the way back at the beginning of the stage. This is annoying enough on its own, but a side effect of this is that Mario's hat also gets blown off. In case you weren't already aware, there's a few ways in this game to lose your hat, and when it happens, Mario takes double damage. So obviously, there's more incentive than just fashion to retrieve it. Well, here comes the trauma. You know that ice block I mentioned a minute ago? Well, the star is tucked away in a hole that Mario can only fall into once he traverses his way through the sections of the ice block that are carved out. So you make your way through a mini maze, get to the top, drop in the hole, and get the star. Well, when I was about nine years old and playing this game, in some one in a million scenario, the snowman sent me and my hat both flying. Only this time, the hat managed to land directly in the hole where the star is. And guess what? The star, like most other stars in the game, hovers slightly above the ground, and it's literally impossible to touch the ground where my hat was located without touching the star first. My hat was permanently stuck in an area I couldn't retrieve it from. This doesn't change upon rebooting the game, and I've never been the same since. Despite that extremely traumatic experience that I still have nightmares from, to this day I still love this stage and have fun with it, even though it's impossible for me to do so without having flashbacks and, uh, and panicking every time that this dumbass snowman sends me flying. If I can look past all that and still enjoy it, I think that just goes to show how good of a stage it is. Wet Dry World is pretty damn slow and can get pretty frustrating if you don't know what you're doing. It's basically the water temple of Mario 64 stages. And by that I mean the whole thing is basically a puzzle that has to do with rising and dropping water levels to access different parts of the stage in specific orders. It's very easy to change the water level hastily without realizing that it just temporarily gated you out of a star until you reset the water level again. I will say that the mechanic of being able to set the water level to specific heights depending on how high you actually jump into the entrance of the stage is pretty neat, but outside of this, the stage is definitely one of the slower, more confusing ones. There's quite a bit of strategy and preemptive planning involved with some of these stars, and while I do think it's clever, the execution isn't exactly what I'd call fun. One noteworthy thing though is this little secret town that can only be accessed by raising the water as high as it will go so you can get inside the secret entrance. But the town itself only houses two stars, one of which is incredibly easy and the other is just another red coin mission. 
protection. Also, fuck these enemies. Apparently they're called heave hose. So they can't actually hurt you, and their main attack is actually a mechanic that's needed to progress in the stage. They come after Mario and launch him onto other platforms that can't be reached. Problem is, sometimes they come at you at the wrong angle and toss you up in the air, and then you just come back down and take fall damage. Now, you could chalk that up to just being careless and not having them aim you properly, but there's another scenario where they do launch you onto the higher platform, only to have you then get greeted by yet another one who picks you up before you even have the chance to get up and run away. I think my only deaths in this stage ever came from getting mercilessly tossed into the air several times while being completely incapable of escape. This level is definitely another low point in the game. Alright, I know a ton of people hate this level, but I like it. I like it a lot. Out of all the stages in the game, I think this one is the ultimate test of platforming skill, and I don't think any part of this level is unfair. Unlike most of the other stages, every single star in this level is a platforming challenge. Like Wet Dry World, this level changes depending on how you happen to enter it. This time, the speed at which the platforms and various obstacles in the stage move is determined by where the minute hand lands when you enter. In fact, the entire Red Coin mission this time around is designed around making everything stop. The only gripe I really have with this stage is less about the design of the stage itself and just the inherent flaw of Mario 64 and how you have to re-enter a stage after getting a star. Because there's so much platforming in this one and it's designed to be traversed vertically, it is kind of a chore to re-enter and then have to climb all the way back to the top of the stage to get a star that was like two feet away from the star you just got. Although it does make some of the stars in this level a little annoying to go back and get, nothing, and I mean nothing in the entire game suffers from this as badly as the next stage. Fuck Rainbow Ride. I don't know why eight-year-old me thought this level was cool, but I want to go back in time and tell me he's a dumbass because this is definitely the worst level in the game, and whoever greenlit it must be a little low-poly Mario. It's a slow, frustrating anti-climax of a stage, especially considering it's basically, for all intents and purposes, the final stage for a lot of people. Now, I'm glad I realized at least the whole slog of a beginning of the stage can be bypassed just by long jumping in the opposite direction you're intended to go in, but but it still is about a 20% fix for a 90% broken stage. There are a few interesting platforming challenges here right around that area, but the rest of the stage relies on this whole mechanic of stand on these floating magic carpets that travel at a snail's pace, and if you make one wrong move, you have to start all the way over at the beginning. To make matters worse, even if you don't fall to your death, if you step off of the carpet for too long, it just disappears. And the best part is, usually in that situation, you don't just immediately die. But you are, however, just kind of stranded in the middle of the sky and need to make the conscious decision to kill yourself so you can start over from the beginning. I'll admit there's a couple stars in this stage I do like, but the majority of Rainbow Ride is just waiting 10 years for the game to hand deliver you to each star at like two miles an hour. The stage takes long enough on its own because of how slow it is, and that's before you accidentally make a mistake yourself. It really feels like the polar opposite of TikTok Clock because instead of being asked for my skill, I feel like I'm being asked solely for my patience. Which I've gotta say, after just one death on this stage, I don't have much of. For once in the entire game, I actually feel as though the camera causes a problem. Sure, the camera isn't perfect, but almost everywhere else in the game, you kinda have time to stop and adjust the camera accordingly. In this stage, you better have a good sense of depth perception at all times or you're pretty much screwed. With everything all said and done, it's a close call, but I have to say Lethal Lava Land is my favorite. It's no competition for Rainbow Ride though, because I can say beyond a shadow of a doubt with full confidence that this is the worst stage in the entire game. Uh, a scale of one to poopy is fucking poopy. Hey, thanks for watching my video. If you liked it, maybe check out one of these other videos I have on the screen. And if you want to see more, click that subscribe button and maybe by some miracle, I'll pop up in your sub feed. Also, if you want to help me not starve to death, my Patreon link's right there too.